What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to be talking about something that I've been kind of discussing a lot with people lately, and that is where a lot of your power comes in the early and mid game. So there's kind of like four places nowadays, mainly three in the early game, four in the mid game, where the bulk of your power comes because of course building one hero at a time is the way you play Idle Heroes, is very different from most other Idle Gosh games where kind of want to build up a whole team here you want one hero and one hero only then transition to your second one and there's a lot of places where the power comes from and there's a lot of places where your team power comes from because even though you only have that one hero there's still plenty of supports in the games like baby Tixes, baby amon Ra's, baby carries they can do a lot for your team but the problem is they can't survive a lot of the time so this is going to be like the top four places to focus on in the early game to not slack on and try to prioritize these resources to make sure your overall team can live longer and get more progress so hopefully you guys enjoy this one let's jump right into it by the way, if the microphone audio feels a little bit different today, it's because I'm kind of doing some changes in the office. I don't have everything up, so it's a little echoey in here right now, so I do apologize. But let's jump right into it. So starting off, the number one place you should be focusing your attention in the early game is going to be your guild tech. Guild tech is by far one of the most important hero progression systems in the game, and a lot of people tend to spread their systems out a little too thin. What you should be doing is you should be picking whichever class your main hero is, whether it's like Ithaca, Assassin, Eloise, Ranger, Inosuke, Ranger. If you're building a warrior like a Garuda, I guess that works too, but... You really want to focus on finishing out the initial be first tree before anything else, before putting any points into a secondary class. So typically what people do is they will get everything up to here and then there's a decision you have to make because of course your secondary guild tech when it comes to anti-class aka damage reduction against certain classes becomes an important thing depending on which sea land you're progressing. This extra damage reduction can mean the difference of living through a fight or dying too early and not getting to the end of the rounds. So, typically what I say is stay away from this right side completely on your first hero, but do a little research, figure out which sea lane you're going after and figure out what the enemies are in that sea lane because it might be worth investing 10, maybe 15, even 20 points into an anti-class damage reduction before moving on to a second tree. Now, typically people are picking like rangers or mages as their first E5 heroes, it feels like. If that is the case, typically what happens afterwards is people try to finish the assassin tree, the first tr the first tier in here, the inner circle of the assassin tree. Why? Because you want to keep heroes alive like your Drake and your Heart Watcher, because typically those aren't going to be very high level. And these bonus stats, tons of extra HP bonuses, that's going to make the difference of helping them live in your PvE scenarios like Guild Boss. And of course, your broken spaces. Those are absolutely huge for progression, mainly the guild boss, because guild coins are how you're going to fuel these trees up even more. So typically what you have to decide is how many of these extra nodes you want to finish and then move on to your secondary trees, your secondary class trees. Now, your second place you should really focus on after guild tech, even in the mid, mid game is finishing one of your monsters. So typically Phoenix is the go-to first monster to build, unless you're building like an Ithaqua, and then in those cases, you know, building the wolf might be the better idea. But for 99% of players, you should be going for your Phoenix as your first fully complete pet. It's just so good in PvP. Vortex Tower, it's like the best pet overall. It has very offensive stats, it has a little bit of a heal in there, and it has those bonus, bonus damages for burning enemies. And there's a very easy way to get that burn on the enemy with just a low level Death Sworn. So, overall here, one thing people don't realize is, yes, these stats are nice here because they are stats that can be multiplicative by other bonuses, but the runes are really where the power of your account come in. You're getting a fixed 3.2 million HP on a level one, one star hero even. Every single hero on your account get these flat boosts. 
Typically, HP is the more important one. I do like on most occasions leveling the HP and the attack at the same time. Stay far away from the speed. Leave the speed to the end. The only time the speed is going to really matter is in like very end game game modes and PvE and PvP. It's not something you should be worried about. Maxing out the attack rune and the HP rune are by far the most important. These stats right here are going to keep your low level heroes like we're talking about. You'll, you'll have a bunch of level 100 five star heroes on your account supporting your main first E5. Even, even down the road, you might have three or four E5 heroes. You're still going to have those couple of like five star heroes like carries and such, which will benefit greatly from these bonuses. It'll severely or I guess I should say extremely help you in broken spaces and it'll definitely help you in all the other game modes, even sea land, sea land. These stats come in absolutely huge. So after your guild tech, make sure you are focusing on your monster levels. Now, one thing I forgot to mention here is don't really prioritize the actual level of your monster as much. It's not as big of a deal. You want to really be hunting after these chaos stones and not the monster souls as much. Getting up to level 120 is important. After 120, it's a huge gold sink, so that might be hurting your account overall. Get to level 120, then hold it there and make sure you have gold for leveling heroes, enhancing guild tech, getting gear, stuff like that. Now, the next one might be something you aren't as expecting as much, but I do want to talk about it because even if you don't have a first E5 hero, it's something you should know for the future. And that is in the Gate of the Void, your Galactic Tree is going to add a ton of base stats to all of your heroes. Uh, I mean, you can see here, like, you're getting fixed attack on a lot of heroes. You're, some of them give HP, which are a nice little bonus here. Now, these stats are not able to be multiplied by your other multipliers, like in your guild tech, things like that. They are fixed, so they're just flat bonuses, but you can get a ton of stats, like right here, just one at level 20. That's 110 extra, 110,000 extra HP on your lower level hero. So make sure you guys are going through get them all to level 20 i know getting them past level 20 is very difficult it is even on me for me for the whale accounts because the blue literally the star spawn core ones are some of the most it's the biggest chokehold on most people's accounts until you're starting to get duplicate star spawns which we're getting close to that you're gonna have a lot of level 20 pets but don't worry those level 20 pets are still giving some decent stat bonuses to your five stars and of course it is helping your main carry heroes as well now the last one here is more geared towards your actual main heroes and less towards your support heroes on your account but it's something I want to talk about because resident gear gives a ridiculous amount of stats to your first e5 heroes one thing I've noticed is on our free to play accounts and our fresh accounts that we've been doing things on we get the most progress compared to other people doing the same thing when we prioritize getting up to a resident set of gear on our first hero and now it's even more important because not only are you getting these bonuses getting extra bonuses like on the accessory slot getting more HP more attack not only are you getting that now, which are great stats, but now on Celestial Island, on top of that, you're getting more buffs and more, more, more buffs for every hero that is equipped with that resonance gear. Like I said, it has to be a full set of gear on the hero. It doesn't really help your support heroes, but this alone really makes getting your first C lane 20 so much easier you're getting a ton of more stats. Now, granted, we're level 29. We have a ton of suits of gear, but even just one is a little bit more HP, a little bit more attack, and in combination with those extra stat bonuses, it ends up being quite a few stats and making a lot of things in the early game much, much easier. So let me know what you guys think. Now, of course, one thing that we could always talk about when we're talking about something like this is once you do get your first E5 hero, make sure you're prioritizing cores of transcendence over any other resources because those are going to eat stellar shards. Those are going to eat crystals of transcendence, both building you transcendence heroes, which are significantly going to improve the power of your account. And of course, imprints, which are going to help you get other tasks done until you get that first 
Transcendence Hero. You're going to get V4 Heroes, hopefully down the road. That's going to be more power, which then unlocks your Cloud Island on Celestial Island, where you can put Tenants in, give bonus stats to that V4 Hero, and tons of other stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Hopefully it kind of helps you understand what you should be doing in the early and mid games and what you should be prioritizing. Even over building multiple heroes, like one super strong hero with all these five stars around them, with the right setups between guild tech, uh, your monster, and all those different things is going to make you a much more powerful account. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. See you guys next time.